Meltwater CEO John Lassigan is famous for connecting the dots out there in the internet and helping companies really make sense of it all. And he's come out with a new book called Outside Insights. Welcome. And, um, you know, tell us a little bit about this, this new book of yours. Um, what, what makes it so unique, the insight, and what's like the core um, sort of ideology behind the book? Yeah, so the main thesis of the book is that companies today don't utilize a lot of the new information that is available on the internet. So most companies focus primarily on the internal data when they're making decisions. But over the last few years, internet has so much different new data types, and we call them online breadcrumbs. We talk about job postings, we talk about web traffic data, we talk about Google AdWords spend, and so on. And the idea is if you use that information, you will better understand your competitors, you will better understand your clients, and you will make much more informed decisions. So in South Africa, we've, we've had a lot of companies that have experienced reputational damage from political events and from, and from just things that they might not have prepared for. Right. How can this kind of concept help them prepare better and, and, and act better? Right. So I think uh, analytics in social media is really valuable in that regard. And a big part of these scandals often are found in social media. Mm. And there are lots of, lots of social media activities going on in, in South Africa and across Africa. So that would be a very good place to start. Okay, so then, um, you know, taking an example of, 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 of a situation in this country where, where um, a, you know, there's this whole thing around state capture and around mm -hmm. the, the Guptas are very, very much in, right. in the headlines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're a company that gets, that gets implicated in this and there's a lot of noise on social media. Um, how could, just give an example of how a company could, could take that information and, and use it. Yeah, so first you need to understand what people are saying yeah. and whether the claims are right or whether the claims are wrong. And then you have an opportunity then to do countermeasures and using social media analytics you can also then see whether or, those, whether or not you're able to get your message through. Yeah. So social media is really a really valuable tool in that regard. If you had to look at the um, Donald Trump uh, election and how, and how that unfolded, what lessons did you learn there from, from Mount Water and from your, your insights there? I think um, the interesting thing was that we actually was able to predict uh, the Trump election, um, even with Brexit. But I think one of the lessons you learned is that we have today really powerful platforms that can disseminate information extremely effect effective. And it's clear that Facebook is a platform that we need to be thoughtful about how it's really used and thoughtful about how advertisers and other players can really utilize the strength and the capability of that platform. So there are lots of concerns in the US at least that Facebook maybe did not manage that situation as well as they should. Okay. So if we're to look at the breadcrumbs that you that you that you're looking for, yeah. where where do you find these breadcrumbs? They're typically available all over the place, all over the internet. If you're on Facebook and you post something, if you're on Instagram or post something, then you leave a personal breadcrumb. Yeah. Big companies today are also leaving breadcrumbs. It's actually very hard for a company not to leave breadcrumbs whenever they launch an activity or an initiative. So for example, if a company changes their prices, it's typically found online. If they're launching a campaign, that is also uh, found online. If there's a problem with a company's product, that trickles into social media. So internet is full of these breadcrumbs everywhere. And what breadcrumbs um, would you say you still need to try and find? The, the breadcrumbs that could add even more value to, say, a company's insights into what's happening out there? Yeah. So, a wide range of data types that could really be mined. Uh, one of them could be patent filings, it could be tender databases, it could be job postings. So, in addition to those traditional data types that you would uh, mine, like news and social media, there are a whole range of new data types that companies should really take a closer look at. And um, if we had to look at fake news, how, how, is, that a, how is that a hindrance to, to, towards the breadcrumbs? In a way, they are breadcrumb viruses out there, in a way. <laughs> yeah, so fake news, of course, has been a big issue um, in, in this latest election and so on. I think, however, that f fake news could have been addressed more effectively by larger companies like Google and Facebook. Mm. So, for example, Malfoder, we have eliminated the issue with fake breadcrumbs. By reporting news only from very reputable sources. But of course, fake news can also trickle into established sources and so on. But then these sources typically find an, an opportunity to 
identify those and report if they report something wrong. So um, fake news shouldn't really be as big an issue as it is today. I think it goes back to the problem with the strong platforms as we talked about, Facebook and, and Google. But I do think as people start to analyze breadcrumbs and use those breadcrumbs to really understand intent of their competitors, I think companies will also start to believe fake breadcrumbs. They will like to confuse um, people that are analyzing them in order to not give away the hand too early. So for example, it could be that maybe you file a patent in an area that you don't have any intention uh, to go because you, know, you don't want to give away all your intentions. Uh, and probably what you want to see is there going to be an arms race between people that create breadcrumbs and those who create algorithms to analyze it, much in the same way that you have spam and spam filters today. Another interesting thing is our, our algorithms. I heard um, on TED Talk the, the head of the Competition Commission in Europe saying they could use competition laws to, to regulate how companies um, you know, use, use algorithms because it can really trap people into a mindset or trap people into mm. thinking or saying a certain thing without them even realizing that. Mm. You know, what are your concerns with algorithms? I do think that yeah, um, all these sophisticated algorithms can be a force for good can be really valuable, but as all powerful technology can also be used in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So cryptography, for example, is really good because it helps us do trade and transactions online on an open internet. It can also be used by bad people to hide and track their behavior. So smart algorithms, artificial intelligence is definitely something that will create a lot of value. But I do think we need to be thoughtful about how we use them and maybe in particular protect the privacy of individuals that are on the internet because all of us are pretty naive digital citizens right now uh, as we look at it. And um, let's just finally talk about you. I mean, you started this company in, in, in Norway. It was very small in a, you know, mm -hmm. in a, in a shack, yep. shack 15 or something. Yep. Correct. So, you know, how, how has the journey been for you as a, as a tech entrepreneur and, yeah. and where, do you, where do you see yourself going with the company into the future? Yeah, so it has been a phenomenal journey in many ways. Uh, we started out uh, with two guys in a coffee machine in, in Norway. And we started the company with $15,000. And we built the company without external funding and, and debt. And now we are 1,600 people across the world. Um, and we are today the largest player in the media intelligence globally. But the area where we find really interesting is to add additional data types. Some of those we already talked about. Uh, we call that area overall as outside insight. We believe that companies going forward will use a new type of software category that is to external data, but BI is to internal data. So that new software category is an area that we are investing heavily in and want to be one of the main providers. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your, your time and your insights with us. Thank you so much.